Visiting former U.S. presidential candidate Mike Huckabee says that the recent U.S. abstention on U.N. Resolution 2334 was both anti-Israel and anti-Semitic. In an exclusive interview with ILTV, Huckabee told reporter Steve Leibowitz that he looks forward to much improved relations between Israel and the U.S. once Donald Trump takes office. But first, he began by responding to erroneous reports that he was offered the post of U.S. ambassador to Israel. Governor Huckabee, there was a short while that there was a story running in the press here in mm -hmm. Israel and, and abroad that Mike Huckabee was going to be the U.S. ambassador to Israel. Was there any veracity to that story? Not to my knowledge. Um, I got all these congratulatory calls and emails that were just pouring in from all over Israel and from all over America, but it was news to me. I had, in fact, met that very day with Trump at Trump Tower to discuss the offer that he had made to me of a cabinet post, the Israeli ambassador position never came up. And it was a total surprise when it came. And it was reported as fact. It wasn't just reported as it may be offered, it's speculated, but it's a done deal. Would you have accepted? Uh, it would have been one of the few things that he could have offered me that I would have entertained. But I'm so very happy with the ambassador that he has chosen. I think David Friedman is a brilliant choice. And it's good news for America, it's good news for Israel, it's good news for the Trump administration. And I'm wholeheartedly uh, supporting David Friedman for the ambassador uh, position here. Well, what kind of relationship do you anticipate between the U.S. and, and uh, Israel moving forward? I think it's going to be a dramatically improved relationship. It's going to be one built on trust and respect, um, mutual interest, something we haven't seen in eight years. And one that, frankly, got progressively worse over the eight years. And I don't understand because it's an irrational um, situation for the United States to have betrayed Israel at the United Nations. And I feel like that's what it was. It was a betrayal. It was an anti-Semitic act of hate at the United Nations. And not only should we not have been a silent partner in standing by and letting it happen, we should have been a vociferous critic of that action and vetoed it and said over our dead bodies. You've had some conversations with Donald Trump since his election. Mm -hmm. I imagine the subject of Israel mm -hmm. has come up in those conversations. Yes. I know that those were probably uh, f four eyes that you, know, you don't want to discuss publicly, but what can you say about what you would suggest to the new U.S. president about relations between the two countries? I think we're going to see a relationship in which what the are you president- rec What are you recommending? Um, first of all, I hope that we do, in fact, finally move the embassy to Jerusalem with the legitimate and recognized capital of, of Israel. That's first and foremost, that we make it very clear that we support an undivided Jerusalem, that we support Israel in controlling and being able to live peacefully in Judea and Samaria throughout those regions, um, that we put a stop vigorously stop the BDS movement, which, which is hurtful to everybody. There's nobody who gains from that. And especially of all the people who have the most to lose, it's uh, many of the people in the Arab uh, populations who could have had, and in some cases have had, outstanding jobs that they're losing because of the pressure of BDS. And frankly, I hope that once and for all we put an end to the long-standing conversation and negotiation about a two-state solution that uh, would involve the splitting of Yerushalayim and it would also involve uh, the Israelis once again giving up land because every time that they have done that, look at what happened in Gaza when they moved all the Israelis out of Gush Katif, uh, Hamas came in and before long they're firing missiles and rockets into civilian populations and uh, Israelis died because of it. I, I, I don't think it's a rational policy and one that we should continue pursuing. Finally, I'd like to ask you this. Uh, I'm an American expat. I live uh, in this country for many years. I mm -hmm. had no horse in the race, but I was observing the race, of course, very closely as sure. many of us were. It was a very troubling election campaign. Yeah. And the new president-elect had a number of things to say that from a moral point of view, are quite disturbing as the message given to kids, to young women, mm -hmm. to young women in the United States. 
What would you suggest to Trump that he can do in order to lessen some of that damage that was caused? I think in many ways he was a candidate for our time in that we are living in a bold course, sometimes um, very blunt society. I mean, look at, look at what people put on blogs. Social media has kind of changed all the rules of conversation. I can put something out on tweet, uh, Twitter or Facebook, and I'll have, you know, obviously some nice things, but I'll have just the most vicious things that'll come back. That's the culture that we now live in. I don't like it. I don't suggest that it's something that he would employ as a president. But Donald Trump is a unique candidate. He's a unique individual. He's going to be a very unique president. And you're optimistic as he moves forward. I'm incredibly optimistic. I think he's going to, um, again, there will be times he'll do things and I'll scratch my head and I'll say, that's not conventional. But maybe this is a time when conventional isn't what we need. We need unconventional. We need bold. Um, we need a person who is not afraid uh, to make a mistake, but will act vigorously in the best interest of the American worker and the American people. Mike Huckabee, thanks so much for being with us at ILTV. Thank you.